Hello and welcome back to Byron's Adventures. We are currently speaking to Rajaya and I would love to be able to persuade her to join us. Um, basically, my whole goal with these factions that have been eliminated completely is to find all of the leaders and then basically be like, hey, would you like to come over to my side? And we already have Luke on and I believe we also have the other the other leader. I can't remember his name at the moment. Uh, Garios, that's it. Garios. We have Lucon and Garios working for us, and I'm hopeful that I will be able to get Regea as well. So let's see if I'm lucky. Oh, nice. Good critical success straight off the bat right here. Let's see if we can go for another one. Ooh, ineffective. Ineffective. That was a 91%. So we'll see. Oh, there we go. There we go. Nice. Okay. One more shot. One more shot. Okay. Yeah, this should. There we go. That is a victory for us indeed. And she joins for free. Oh yeah, she joins for free, which is fantastic because now we have Lycaron and I don't actually need to go into a siege here, which is fantastic. And uh, well, uh, Makeb also, by the way, um, because I persuaded someone just now. And uh, someone said actually, th and I thought this was quite amusing. Someone said that I should give the AI a chance. Yeah, I should give the AI a chance and I should literally go to such lengths as expelling clans from my kingdom. Now, I'm not I'm not entirely sure about you, but I think that's a bit dumb. <laughs> no offense. No offense. If you want to do that, then that's absolutely fine. That's up to you. But I think it's a little bit too in the way of uh, idiocy in a bit of a way there. I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it just seems to me like that's not really, I don't really get it to be honest, because let's just say, and I'm going to liken it to, uh, let's say the Star Wars universe. Yes. So I'm going to liken it to something going on there. So for example, let's say that Emperor Palpatine is just about to finish conquering the galaxy. Yes. So let's say that he literally conquers the entire thing. He has no enemies whatsoever. There's no rebellion. And if he's capable of, of finishing it, then he'll do that. But then he's then he just thinks to himself, wait a minute. I'm going to give them a bit of a chance. And he literally just sits back and lets the rebellion destroy the Death Star over and over and over again. Why would he do that? It doesn't make sense, does it? It doesn't really make sense to me. So, that's kind of the same thing, even though Byron's technically not an evildoer, kind of. He's uh, sort of just like some random guy that came out of nowhere and is just now taking over the entirety of the map. But it's kind of the similar thing where you don't really give your enemies a chance to come back, do you? I mean, that's the whole point of the game, is it not? I mean, the whole point of the game is to literally go against enemy factions and take their territory. I'm not entirely sure why I'd give them a chance to come back into it. I I don't know. Very strange thought process in regards to that, in my opinion at least. But, you know, that's how it is. If the game was working as intended, then I would have been able to persuade all those vassals beforehand anyway, and you know, it would be much less likely for them to leave, but it was just, in my opinion, the persuasion system before, or the issue we say the loyalty system was kind of broken before. And uh, yeah, well, anyway, point is, hopefully you all loved my uh, wonderful, um, I, I don't know whether to call it ranting or whether to call it a bit of a discussion or, you know, bringing up various points about the siege mechanics. And I, I actually do quite like how they have things going right here. However, the thing is, I saw a comment that said, the less units you have, the less you're going to lose. Well, that's actually not not exactly true because when you have a small army, let's say you have, um, I don't know, 50. Let's say you have 50 and you, you lose 10. You're still losing a fifth of your army in comparison to, for example, if I had 500 and I lose, what, 30, 40? That's still less than losing 10 because you still only have 50 in the smaller army. You know what I mean? So it is more of a, an impact on a smaller army than it is on the larger army because losing 50 or so units or 100 units even in the 500 army is really not a big deal in comparison to losing 10 in the 51. 
if you understand what I mean. So anyway, the point is, I, I think that there definitely should be something going on with the interaction between, you know, between the, uh, the siege defense and the player, because I don't think the player should be able to go in for free. I think there should be some something that needs to be done, whether that be a uh, speech check by using charm or using money if you're a uh, trading kind of character or generally that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? I'm just I'm just thinking about that kind of thing. And um, that, that really does make a bit of a difference, you know, of course, because then that will add to the uh, add to, it will add to the RPG you know what I mean it will add to the RPG feeling of the game and it will give everyone much more of a choice as well so instead of just the uh, in my opinion it it's just a, a very um, basic and that's putting it kind of lightly you know it's kind of a basic solution to the whole thing of going into a siege because let's let's face it people might be open to diplomacy. They might be open to diplomacy. They might be open to being bought off. Um, but if none of that works, then I guess, well, fighting or uh, sacrificing units to get through to the garrison is the next best thing. So I guess what I'm asking for is just a, a little bit more variety in my options. That's pretty much what I would like to see going forward in the development of Bannerlord. I think that could be quite fun. All right, so we're going to just give this to uh, Garyos here. Have you noticed how I've been attempting to chase after Monchug for this entire time? And I was just about to catch up to him. And then that extremely annoying uh, mechanic happens, you know, where someone someone constructs an army or, or creates an army. And then all of a sudden, my character automatically goes towards their location. In my opinion, that is um, something that really needs to be removed or something because I, I it can cause some really, really big disasters and, and catastrophes to befall you because let's just say that you're um, trying to run away, right? Trying to run away from a really, really big army of some kind and then someone calls you to an army and it turns you in the opposite direction and then that massive army catches up to you as a result i think that is really harsh so it would probably be a good idea for uh, that to be changed yeah he is actually the leader isn't he so me discussing this is basically pointless but um yeah he has such a small army that we should be able to auto resolve it very very fast as you can see right there look at that literally what two seconds took him about two seconds to get defeated yeah pretty happy with that pretty happy and uh, yeah, I, I have said that we are going to be doing less auto resolves, um, but in in these kinds of cases, I don't really see the need to to go in manually. As I've said before, I think it is much uh, much more uh, much more realistic, I guess you could say, to, for us to actually fight a manual battle when the uh, when the enemies are on a, a sort of a level uh, close to ours. You know, because it, it, let's let's just say that we are the most renowned commander in the history of Calradia, and we are trying to, uh, you know, we're trying to win against a, an enemy like this, for example. This guy has a hundred. You really think that this renowned commander is going to? Yeah, unfortunately, I did try to persuade this guy before, and he uh, was kind of failing to to be uh, successful here so yeah anyway point is you really think that renowned commander is going to fight a battle like this i mean maybe you know maybe it really depends but personally i feel like it is just not worth it's not worth our time you know such a small army is just not worth our time anyway we are going to probably try and take a vostrum in this episode and as a result i am going to be calling for an army so let's see if i can get someone that is relatively close by. Really? They're actually super far away, most of them. Wow. All right. Yep, I guess I'll just ask for all of those then, and we'll see how it goes. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to go into the battle just yet, because these guys will probably sally out 
but they have a very small garrison. So I would assume that most of the units that they have in the garrison here is going to be nothing too special. They do have 18 heavy horse archers, but that's really not too much to worry about, at least in my opinion. So for this, because this is a town, I will be doing the, uh, the classic I'm going to bash down your walls tactic, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Unfortunately, we don't have enough units to prevent the enemy from sallying out potentially. So if there is a, a, an enemy vassal close by, we might very well see an extremely large battle on our hands. But um, I, I'm hopeful that that will not be the case because I don't really want to get into any of those, if at all possible. But otherwise, um, yeah, we're doing pretty well. We're doing pretty well. How old is Byron, by the way? I actually don't know how old he is at the moment. Let's have a look, shall we? He's 98. He's almost at the big, th big three number. Number. Mm. Yes. Very good. I'm. I'm very good at uh, articulating myself, aren't I? Yes. Absolutely. Very good. We're coming up with the words. All right. So anyway, we we have 900 units. Okay. 900. That's pretty good. That's not too bad. And uh, we're getting some more, of course, because my units are a little bit injured. There we go. And uh, let's get some of those. We've got to be a bit careful about doing this as well because. You've got to remember that I am probably going to end up feeding most of my vassals here, which is a bit of a, a bit of a bone of contention for me, to be honest, because I feel like they should have enough. I mean, we have such such a significant portion of territory that I personally feel like they should be prepared for these kinds of situations. I'm going to give it to Sarandon here, just literally because he has enough influence to ask for it. I will give Urios some more. Don't worry about that. Okay, so yeah, my camera's going to go all the way back to our uh, to our siege now. Okay, so let's take a look and see what's happening here. How are we doing? Well, not very well so far. They've not done that much damage, if any, to the wall just yet. Uh, but it seems like the enemy is using catapults. And I've said time and time again that I personally feel like catapults are very easy for trebuchets to deal with. They're, they're slow firing, they're not particularly accurate, and in general they are take, they take quite a bit of time to construct in comparison to ballistas. I personally feel like ballistas are much better. They have a much quicker uh, respawn time or construction time, and they are much more accurate and can do can do a lot more damage, at least in my opinion, um, because the catapults, as I've said, are slower to fire and they more they're more inaccurate. So, you know, you got to bear that in mind. Anyway, uh, well, we're going to get another trebuchet going down here. We've all we've done over half of the damage to the walls already. This is actually remarkably quick so far, which I got to say I'm quite surprised at. To be honest, I am quite surprised at that. I'm very much hoping that we will be able to get the walls down. Um, yeah, yeah I, I hope that this trebuchet goes down first and then allows me to construct another one, if at all possible. Or uh, maybe an onager or something like that. There we go, there we go. Let's get an onager, fire onager. Let's get another one. There we go. We need to get it up as soon as possible. That's what. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's go over here and yeah, yes, we're gonna give it to Orios. Don't think he has that much influence, and that's the reason why uh, he's not actually able to bid for it. So I'm just going to kind of be a bit uh, be a bit nice to him and get him some uh, get him some good stuff going on there. Okay, so yeah, now we're having some difficulties because we have onagers and we don't have pretty much anything else going on here. So I'm gonna just go for some cohesion here. And come on, Onigas, you can do it. Get the walls down. You can do it, sirs. Okay, Epinosa Castle, really? Why did this get taken? Give it to Regea. And uh, every single time one of our siege equipment gets destroyed as well, we do have to uh, bear in mind that that will result in a couple of casualties for us too, which is not exactly great. But it's only got 4,000. Look at this. There you go, 3,000. Come on now. Yes, yes, just under 2,000. Great. And there you go. All right. So let's go in. Okay, this is going to be one of the largest sieges we've done. And uh, bear in mind that the game version I'm playing on does not have any kind of optimization in regards to um, one fix. 
uh, that, it do that does affect me in sieges. So I'm hopeful that it will not affect me this time, but we'll see. Uh, it's to do with a AI memory leak or something like that. I'm not entirely sure, and it's not fixed on my version at the moment. Um, so I might suffer some, some frame drops here and there, but uh, hopefully you can forgive that because it is just the game's optimization and not actually my system, even though hilariously enough, I said that that one time, if you remember, in a previous episode, I said, yeah, that's just due to the optimization of the game. And then everyone in the comments was like, you should get a new computer. I, I, actually, no, I shouldn't, because this one's a, a perfectly fine toaster, and I am perfectly happy with the hamster that's running it at the moment. Thank you very much. Anyway, let's do some damage. There we go. There's some people coming down the stairs. We would like them to go back up the stairs, though. Thank you very much. Oh, look at Byron. He's fighting tooth and nail up here, isn't he? Nice. Yes. Stab them. Uh, uh, yep, yeah, stab them. There we go. Nice. Okay. Uh, uh. Oh, I didn't even need to block. Didn't even need to block against him. Nice, nice. Okay. Let's bring out my bow a little bit. Oh, no. Never mind. Apparently, my bow is not necessary. There we are. Take him down. Take him down. Nice. Good. Yep. There we go. Nice. Cool. Okay. So, I'm happy now to use my bow a little bit. And I'm very much... I'm very happy to see that we're not lagging that much either. Oh. I see... Oh, dear. I seem to be in a bit of a, a bad situation. This, uh, this is actually a pretty awful situation to be in. I'm very surprised my units lost in this area. Okay, well, uh, I guess I'll just get out my two-handed and just go to town then. Yeah, AI. Look at this. You see the AI just literally turning around as soon as I am uh, anywhere close to them? Yeah, that's pretty funny. Thankfully, some of them I can actually swipe at but most will turn around randomly when I get close, which is kind of funny. Thankfully, I am actually able to do a little bit of damage here and there. That is so, so funny. Oh my. Okay, so I'm gonna just get out my bow here, try and do some damage to the enemy. Nice, did you see that? That was a headshot and a half. Very nice. Okay, oh, now I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm, I'm dead. Nope, nope. Oh, I'm actually alive. Can you believe it? I can't. I can't. Oh, hello. This is bad. Oh, this is this is very bad, actually. Okay. You, you, you guys can just... Never mind, then. I took two cutting damage to the head. That was the thing that killed Mr. Byron. Ah, that grinds my gears, it does. That grinds my gears. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so yeah. Now my units are... are apparently, now my units are going in. I'm not entirely sure why. It seems like they were having more difficulties over in this direction than they were in the other side. So that was my bad, uh, failing to analyze which area was best to go into first. I thought to myself, oh, I'll just go into the, the closest one, you know, because I thought that that was where most of the enemies were, were going to be congregating and where most of my people would go to, but apparently not. And it seems like some of these guys are actually waiting outside. I'm not entirely sure why that is. That's a very strange, <laughs> very strange action to take. But these guys are pouring in here. They've, oh, look at this. They've actually cornered them. They have cornered them so significantly that they're doing the jitterbug. They are doing the jitterbug right now. That is a long, long time ago, that dance move. Or should we say dance style eh, has been a thing. So, yeah, pretty crazy. All right, let's just uh, speed things up and uh, see how many units we end up losing. And that appears to be it. Look at all of the bodies. Oh, yes. They threw their lives down in an effort to defend against their mortal enemy, the Byronian. So, oh, yes. And, uh, well, that has, uh, that has transpired to be not exactly the best possible decision that they could have made. But, of course, that's the only one they've given by the developers so far. They don't have any kind of diplomatic solutions or any other kinds of uh, situations that they can resolve through barter or talking either and uh, it would be cool it would actually be a lot of a lot of fun uh, if the developers uh, did something about that and uh, maybe added something additional to uh, to the game to allow you to resolve sieges without fighting I, as i've said multiple times i feel like that would be a very cool thing indeed 
So anyway, uh, I have an army here, so I might as well go and utilize it at Morinia Castle. I have uh, over a thousand units. We should have still a uh, pretty decent uh, combat strength. And I very much hope that we'll be able to take this without too many difficulties. I'm thinking we'll probably just auto-resolve it, because as I've said, it is indeed a castle. And uh, let's actually just see this for, for a real quick second. Because one of you mentioned that it might make more of a difference to build the battering ram and the siege towers and all that stuff uh, it might give us more success with the auto resolve if we have those things already built i personally don't think so because i think the auto resolve only takes into account the combat strengths of each uh, each side um but as you can see we lost 75 units we have a pretty significant army as it is we've got you know we had over a thousand units when we started but who knows? Maybe it does. Maybe it has some kind of um, passive benefit that gives a, uh, a significant bonus or something. And it's not really a big deal either. I can uh, I can construct those things relatively simply, which I very much appreciate being able to do. Having a good engineering skill is certainly very useful. And I guess I'll just give this to Joran. Why not? Give it to Joran and he'll do a great job. He'll do a fantastic job indeed. All right, so let's take a look at what the current situation is on the map. Zionica is the only one that we really need to take now. Cyronea is also now under siege too, and uh, that is pretty much that. But you know what? You know what? Let's do this. Let's go to the clan and let's start expelling every single clan that I can from my faction so that I can end up then losing the game. Sounds like a really, really smart idea, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, it's, it's like a, almost like I've gone crazy if I were to do that, right? Anyway, that will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.